what uh, what does that remind you of? And what do you see? What do you think about when you see that? Uh, one of the worst days of my life. Um, I mean, I've had a lot of bad days in my life, but that day sucked. And it was supposed to be like an amazing day. I'd stayed up all night. I took probably every drug you can imagine, you know, uh, LSD, um, MDMA, and a whole bunch of cocaine. The health part wasn't there yet. Because <laughs> I got out of rehab and I was like, well, let me eat that, let me eat that, because well, I just replaced drugs with food. What's up, dude? Hey, buddy. <laughs> I brought a picture for you to see. That's, uh, I think it's a pretty good memory for both of us. What, uh, what does that remind you of? And what do you see? What do you think about when you see that? Uh, one of the worst days of my life. Um, I mean, I've had a lot of bad days in my life, but that day sucked. And it was supposed to be, like, an amazing day. Yeah. Um, but yeah, pretty miserable. Pretty miserable. <laughs> Same. Do you remember anything noteworthy about why I was so miserable? Yeah. Um, so it was a buddy of ours bachelor party that weekend. It was Mardi Gras weekend. Um, we had a house on uh, Napoleon. And it was fucking pure debauchery, you know? Um, we were obviously riding in Toth, the Sunday, you know, great parade Sunday, early Sunday afternoon. Um, I had stayed up all night. Uh, I took probably every drug you can imagine, you know, uh, LSD, um, MDMA, and a whole bunch of cocaine. And uh, we had to show up to the get to get ready for the parade early, and I was still tripping on acid, and I had just like tried to get myself together at my apartment. I showered and fucking tripping my ass off in the shower, which it was just not fun anymore. And I started having a nosebleed and I was like, if I hadn't have spent whatever amount of money we paid to uh, ride in that float and all the bullshit we bought to throw off the float, I 100% would have skipped. I had no desire to go do this. So then we get to the, the pre, whatever, we're getting ready for the parade and me and you were just, the most miserable people in there. Everybody's happy. Everyone's like ready to freaking go ride on a float. It's supposed to be the best thing you can do during Mardi Gras. Yeah. All we could think about, all we wanted to do was go to the bathroom to go blow more coke so we could try to get ourselves even, you know, back to feeling normal, which was going to be impossible. Um, but like, it was just such a crowd. There was nowhere, no bathroom to go do coke in. And we're just, and that's so, you know, that's all we could think about. It wasn't like, all right, let's, you know, we're going to have fun. You know, even though we're miserable right now, we can, you know, we're going to have fun. It's like, coke, coke, coke. Yeah. Do more. <laughs> and this was what, like 9 a.m. on a Saturday, right? Or something. I mean, it was Sunday, early in the yeah. morning. Yeah. 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 Going on no sleep for, you know, two days. Just stupidity. <laughs> I remember one of the pictures later from that day of us all outside of one of the bars you know, in our costumes and everything. I've used some of those photos to show people how I looked mm -hmm. then. And they, they're like, dude, that can't be you. You couldn't have been that big. It must be the suit or the costume. I'm like, no, man, that's me. And you see that guy on the other end of the row? That's him. Yeah. And they're like, dude, no way. And then I show them you're side by side. It's like, what happened? Who was he? And I was like, let him tell you who he was. Yeah, I mean, um, so judging by that picture, we, we did manage to pull ourselves together that day somehow. Well, you know, once you get on the float, we were able to blow some more coke. <laughs> and, you know, get a few more beers in you, get the adrenaline of the people, uh, you know. We, we, did we did it, we did it. We, did we made it through. Yeah. And so like, we did manage, I did manage that a decent time. Um, thank That's God. a lot of nosebleeds though. That was, <laughs> that was, that was really annoying. But, um, yeah, I, I, you know, at that point in my life, um, 
I wasn't, I wouldn't say I was a full blown addict yet. Like, you know, well, I mean, let me freeze out. I think I was born an addict, but like, um, it hadn't taken a hold of me yet the way it would eventually. Um, but, um, yeah, I was just on my way to, I was just making bad decision after bad decision. I, was that, was that 2014 or 2015? I think 14. Yeah. Um, so it was a good five years before um, I would, you know, change my life around. But, um, you know, that was a point in my life where it was just the bad decisions were really starting to um, pile up. And um, I think I lost my job two years later. You know, went on a fish tour, started, you know, selling drugs, ordering drugs off the uh, dark web. That was my thing, you know. Um, and, you know, yeah, it's like... You start making bad decisions and same thing you do, start doing things you say you never do. And then once you do one of those things, like the, the line gets further and further, you know, you cross that line. Oh, you know, what, what's one more bad thing? And mm. then there is no line, you know, you just. I remember when, uh, when you were first ordering stuff off Silk Road and I was like, this is so fucking stupid. I was like, you are dumb as fuck. And you're like, no, it's cool. It's like, it's encrypted and the FBI can't this and that. And I'm like, yeah. You keep telling yourself that, and I was like, this is dumb, I don't encourage it, I don't condone it, but if you make that order, you can put me down for, uh, you know, like, whatever, whatever. Yeah, no, I thought I was invincible, and, you know, thank God, I never personally got in trouble with that, but I did, I did almost ruin someone else's life, because um, I was getting, you know, getting crazier and crazier with the orders, um, amount of MDMA from uh, Germany or something. And I, this guy, um, you know, was willing to um, get orders sent to his place for me because I was getting last up to my place. And um, he was aware of the risk, but I was still taking advantage of him and, you know, putting someone else at risk when it didn't need to be. And one day he got a package and said it was there. And I, I walked over there and getting raided. Oh, damn. Yeah. Like they were sitting on it? Or somebody was sitting, oh wow. Yeah. And I ran away, ran home like a little bitch. Washed my hands clean of that. Um, you know, wasn't gonna take any, wasn't gonna face the consequences on that. Um, that guy okay or? Yeah. Um, so, you know, when I started to get sober, you know, I'm doing my amends process. Um, I reached out to him and, uh, you know, he forgave me and, um, he, we didn't get into details, but he never got, you know, um, he avoided facing consequences for it. And um, he's actually got a wonderful life going for him right now. And I'm really happy about that. So, you know, things did work out, but it should have never been, you know? Yeah. So. And that was still not even. That, that was a blip. That was a, not even a blip <laughs> on my radar. I wasn't ready to make a change then. I was like, okay, well, fuck that guy. Um, I, and I, well, I did say at that point, I'm never going to, that, that was my last order. I was never going to do it again because I, I was unemployed at the time and I was, I did get a job in Denver. Um, and Denver's where the, it's got my worst, but, um, I did not order stuff on there for two years, three years. And then, you know, as I was full blown addict and locked myself in my apartment and I wanted to get... Uh, lifetime, so lifetime supply of Xanax. So I was like, "Well, I'm tired of trying to get it off this my, whoever." So I ordered an insane amount off of the dark web, and that's well, that was like the final run. You know, I was taking handfuls of bars at a time, washing it down with vodka, not leaving my apartment for two weeks, and um, finally, people were like, "You need help," and. Um, by the grace of uh, three of my best friends, they uh, told me I needed help, and I went and got help, went to rehab. And uh, it's been unbelievable ever since. <laughs> and it was, you know, when I got out of rehab, you know, I'd gotten my mind right as far as, you know, what I need to do to become a better person, but the health part wasn't there yet. Because <laughs> I got out of rehab and I was like, well, let me eat that, let me eat that, because I just replaced drugs 
with food. Sure. And, um, and then that became a pretty ugly picture. And, How and big did you get up to? Do you remember? I'm sure you remember. I think it was 270, 275 pounds, something like that. And how much do you weigh right now? Two, uh, 200, 205, <laughs> somewhere in between there, you know, and then whatever. Given so day. close to a hundred pounds difference. Yeah, 70 pounds. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, like, I saw a picture of myself with my little nephew. Um, and like, I knew things were bad, but I just didn't really care because I was like, well, I'm sober, you know, that's all that matters. Mm. Um, but then I saw this picture, I was like, Jesus fucking Christ. Then my fucking gut was just like hanging over my, and I was like, all right, I gotta do something. When you can't see your dick, <laughs> it's a fucking, it, it's a fucking problem. Yeah. Um, so I was like, all right, you know, then I moved back on my own, back into my apartment. And I was like, all right, let's, let's try and, you know, um, lose some weight. But like, I didn't know what I was doing. You know, I'd struggled with weight my whole life. Well, not my whole life, whole life, but since puberty. In fact, I can remember, like, you were one of the first people to call me fat. <laughs> and, like, I think it was, like, seventh grade. I started getting, you know, I was always an athlete. We were both athletes. And yeah. We played all the sports. And I was still, you know, good at sports at this time. But I Great. Um, was just, you know, eating a sleeve of cookies when I came home from school. And, uh... And- just big vanilla smoothies from places locally that are very high in calories. And I started getting a little bit of a gut, and like you, like you poked my belly, like oh hey, hey, tu- hey tubby, <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah. And so you know, struggle with weight forever, and you know, there'd be times where I'd you know try to start exercising, and um, but it would never last. You know, mm-hmm. I met, it was just. Shock methods like let me starve myself, let me run, you know, and and I hated exercise, I hated running, and so there was just no enjoyment out of it. So I burned myself out, and then gained the weight back plus more. Fluctuated weight a lot over the years. Um, so I was like, well, you know, they tell me in AA like take suggestions from other people. You don't know, you don't have the answers. Like you have to search for help so mm. I called you and I was like alright I, w- I want to I, w- I want to do something different you know like what do I need to do and um, yeah you told me <laughs> I didn't like what I heard I didn't like what I heard at all um, but you know there's a lot of things in my life now that I don't like what I hear but I don't have the answer so you know I got myself in all these bad situations, you know, thinking I knew everything, and that got me into near death. So, let's listen to someone else. (laughs) (laughs) What, uh, what did you not like about what you heard? So, you know, you told me um, I had to start lifting weights, um, which is something I've done basically never. I mean, we, me, you, and Richie, did some weightlifting for like a couple months, freshman year of college. Uh, uh, 20 years ago. Yeah, right, 2002, yeah. 2003. 20 years ago. Yeah. Um, and probably did that for three or four months, looking for a quick fix, you know, thinking if I lift weights for a couple months. Um, and then, you know, then I joined the fraternity and <laughs> that went out the window. Um, so, I was scared of the weight room, you know, like, and like, you know, I, my main goal was to lose weight, you know, not get muscular. Mm. Um, so I was like, well, why do I need to go to the weight room? Like, I, I want to get skinnier. And you're like, you will. <laughs> this will help you lose the weight. And I was like, really? Like, I don't want to get bulky. I, you know, I'm not looking to bulk up. He's like, you will. You'll lose weight. And like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, you gave me a workout plan and you know, told me the right things to eat. Um, you know, gave me my macros and laid it all out. And so, yeah, I started doing the you know, light weight lifting and you know, I was doing the cardio, starting to enjoy it a little bit more. Um, and then, you know, I, I, I'd walk my dog a lot. 
because I got a puppy shortly after sobriety. Um, and then I started lifting weights and I didn't hate it. Um, and then I started like seeing muscles on myself I'd never seen before. I was like, fuck, this is pretty awesome. <laughs> this is pretty cool. Uh, I think I want to do this more. <laughs> so I was like, all right, it's going well. I want to, I want to, I want to get, I want to get more muscular. I want to get stronger now. And you're like, all right, well, here's this. I was like, sick. Yeah. <laughs> and you took it like a fucking, like an athlete, you know, like you followed it strict and like purposeful, right? To where you were just like, dude, give me more like the details. You know, we're all, you were all about the details. And that's, that's critical. Yeah. It was awesome. And, you know, now it's like, it, I, it's so crazy to say this. Like, I really like going to the gym. <laughs> like if I don't go to the gym, it's like, I feel like shit. Um, and like something's missing. And I mean, you know, you could maybe say that, <clears throat> you know, I've replaced my drug addiction. I'm, I'm not addicted to the gym by mm -hmm. any means. Like I can miss and be fine. But it's like, that is an, you know, a replacement of sorts, you know? I mean, the biggest replacement <clears throat> for, you know, my drug use has been my, you know, my my sobriety program, my AA, the AA work I do, you know, going to my meetings, you know, helping other people, sponsoring guys, like that's what gives me fulfillment now, um, which is, you know, awesome. It's amazing. Yeah. It's a journey, man. And, yeah. and now you're just, just walking, you yeah. know, and like improving constantly, still curious, you know, leaning into more discomfort, like looking for discomfort, right? Like you kind of actively find it. Like you're telling me the other day about like the shit I don't want to do. It's what I'm loving now, yeah. you know? Um, God, it's amazing to think about how impactful words can be too when you're kids, you know? Like you're saying like, you remember when I called you fat. It's like, damn. Yeah. Like you, I'm sorry first. Well, but, but I, still, yeah, like, yeah. that you remember that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. It's like the power of that to be like, whether that motivated you, whether that hurt you, you know, nonetheless, like you fucking remember that. It's like, God damn, like to think about how important anything we ever say to each other can really be and like might harbor or might linger or might hold us down or like otherwise, you know, it's just feelings are sensitive, people are sensitive and like, you never know, man. Well, I mean, first of all, you don't know me in a pause yet. I mean, like we all said a lot of fucking hurtful shit to each other when we were kids. And to be quite honest, I mean, our friend group, we say a lot of unkind yeah. things to each other, but it's out of love, yeah. you know? So, um, that's another thing. I've just gotten a lot better, like, dealing with, you know, I used to get so butthurt over things people would say to me, and, like, I know they were kidding, but I'd still take it personally. Mm. And I was just like, whatever, you know, we're mm. friends, and we love each other. Mm. So, yeah. they, you also kind of erased a lot of their ammunition by how you are now, like, uh, things that, still give things play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Still got my quirks, you know. Me too. Yeah. yeah, but who cares? Yeah, exactly. God, man, it's it's such a story, dude. You know, I, I'm I'm grateful to to get to do this, you know, for, for work, per se. But, you know, when it's close to home like this and to see I mean, it's a lot. When people ask me about you and when they see the picture of the transition or the transformation and they're like, yeah, that's so cool. I'm like, dude, it's so much more than that. I was like, this is a life saved. Mm -hmm. Straight up, you know, like, yeah, you came to me as you were. You'd already found and began the path and where you were and whatnot, but like to do what you've done and like I've written about it, to go through what you've gone through is work. It's hard, it takes fucking time. You don't want to do it. Like I remember when you even said, you're like, I'm not really a gym guy, <laughs> yeah, you know? Like literally said that. And I was mm -hmm. like, well, you're fucking about to be motherfucker. Like if you want to do this and expect to get something out of it. And um, you know, people ask about why for me. And I say, it's because it's about impacting lives. It's about changing lives. And it's about a greater good or something greater than myself. And you touched on the AA and, and that work. Yes, it's self-fulfillment for you but you know it's serving a greater purpose, something much bigger than who you are, bigger than what we are. Yeah, I mean, it, <clears throat> it's all about doing the work. Like you said, I mean, like my sponsor always says, you know, 
do nothing, get nothing. Do this, get that. You know, it's simple. It's so simple, it takes work. You do a little work, you'll get benefits. You don't, you'll get nothing. Man, I think that's a great way to end it. Fuck. Do nothing, get nothing. Do this, get that. Pretty easy. Dude, appreciate the time, man. Well, so much so. Thanks, thanks for sharing your and story. I just also wanted to share, like, you've been a huge inspiration to me and, like, how you help other people and, you know, to your journey. Um, we've both been through. Dude, yeah, I know you. I mean, you're, thank you. You're fucking there in a lot of the stories that I'm talking about, you know? I know you gotta be laughing, laughing at some of the stuff I shared, like, damn, he actually said that, you know? Like, I. A friend of mine reached out the other day. He's like, dude, I can't believe you're talking about some of the stuff you're talking about, you know, that it would be buried in closet. I'm like, no, nah, man, it's, it's better to let it out and hopefully elicit some uh, response from other people to know that it's okay, you know, and, and we're still here. And like you said, you're feeling better every day and choosing to be that way is a lot better than fucking going over there, you know? Well, thanks, dude. I love you, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, bro. <laughs>